You know, at Madison Square Garden, guys, in addition to jerseys in the rafters for players who have played for the Rangers, the Knicks, uh, they have some other legends in the building. There's a Billy Joel banner for all the sold-out concerts that sense. Billy has had at Madison Square Garden. After last night's performance, there should be a Jadakiss banner. 63 <laughs> points on Dipset. Should be hanging whole forever locks. immortalized. We can't leave the whole locks out. You know, in the know. rafters. Along with Dick Barnett and Walt Clyde Frazier and Dave DeBusher, Bill Bradley. There should be another name that's hanging in the rafters as well. That's the great actor Richard Schiff because he has been a Nick fan for so long and he has endured the dumpster fire that is the James Dolan era of the New York Knicks that they should forever immortalize this man and hang him in the rafters. <laughs> we are honored to have him join the show today. Thanks so much for taking some time, Richard. How are you feeling? Where are you in the world? I, first of all, I'm, I'm still uh, drinking in that introduction and the idea of, you know, whatever my number is being on the rafter, I love it. Um, I, I am, can you hear me okay? We can hear you loud and clear. I am in Florida. There he is, He's down in Florida, golfing, I would imagine. Something tells me no, that's... No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually down here getting uh, my whole body fixed with prolotherapy and PRP, which is the spinning of the plat platelets. Stuff that you remember athletes years ago used to go to Germany because it was illegal in this country to get their knees spun uh, uh, with PRP. Kobe. Um, that's, that's actually what I'm doing. That's embarrassing. But I, I, I have played one round of golf at Benita Bay, and it was beautiful, uh, although ridiculously hot. I, I, had, he, I he applaud your he, commitment he to the New York Knicks this year, Richard, because one of the highlights of the season this year, and this season will always hold a special place in my heart for many reasons, but was receiving your text messages at all hours of the night. <laughs> You're in Vancouver. You were watching every single game out there, isolated, in Vancouver, shooting the good doctor, staying up late, watching the Knicks, texting me, crazy stuff. What was this season like for you? Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you for being, uh, you know, a text partner. For uh, all, all of my other Knicks fan friends are long gone. <laughs> we the last um, ones left. Yeah, they, they deserted. But um, it was, first of all, I didn't get every game because the NBA package up in Vancouver, in my neighborhood anyway, was such that they chose what games I could watch. And that pissed me off. Um, always so I, half of my texts were coming from, watch, from GameCast on, you know, the ESPN app on, the, uh, on my phone. So, uh, and I would watch and follow and scream as, you know, the ball bounced around the rim and came out on a missed shot. Um, but it was, uh, it was great. It was, you know, exciting. We had a couple of spurts of excitement, you know, back when um, uh, <clears throat> Gallinari and uh, uh, before the big, the big and silly trades, um, when, um, uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, we, we, had, we had a stretch there when we won 54 games, I think, one year, and it was exciting. And that disappeared in a flash. And so this year, seeing some, a mixture of young kids and some veterans, uh, it was really fun to watch. It was fun. We're, we're Nick fans, so we like defense. And it was defense first kind of uh, mentality. And I loved watching it. I loved uh, uh, it. Was, it was a lot of fun. And just, you know, to see um, our players evolve, RJ and, and other guys, you know, step up into the next level. Uh, was great. It was a fun, fun season. We knew it was going to end early in the playoffs, but it was a, it was a blast. Richard Schiff joins the show right now, diehard Knicks fan. And while I know you have lots of love in your heart for the New York Knicks, I know baseball is your real thing. And the Yankees, who have really turned a corner here, Brockman, our producer, a diehard Red Sox fan, not having a great back half of the summer. I knew that night in the Bronx when Verdugo got hit in the back with a baseball, it was going to turn the fortunes of both <laughs> these teams. Were you in the bleachers in Yankee Stadium throwing baseballs at Alex Verdugo? What happened? Uh, no, if it was me, it would be a whiskey bottle. <laughs> Come on. Do you remember the Pete Rose event back in, uh, in 1973 before you were born? No, I don't remember that. I wasn't born. It was the Pete, Pete Rose and, Ro and Bud Harrelson got into a fight. Uh, and Pete Rose pretty much, you know, kicked the living daylights out of him. Mm -hmm. And the Met fans were a little bit angry the next day. And that's the game that I went to, even though I wasn't a Met fan. And, and fans were th hurling uh, whiskey bottles at Pete Rose in left field for beating up little Buddy Harrelson. 
and the uh, contingency of old Mets, including Tom Seaver, and if you remember, Willie Mays was back on the team that year as well in 1973, went out to, uh, to, to left field to, uh, to plead with the crowd to please stop hurling um, uh, flying objects at outfielders with red uniforms. Yeah, and uh, that reminded me of that when Verdugo got hit. Pretty stupid stuff, though. Really stupid stuff, but a moment that I feel like maybe galvanized the Yankees or got them back on track because since then they've been one of the better teams in baseball and they've been playing well. How, how do you put this Yankees team and this season into perspective? And this is why I love talking sports with you because you bring up stuff that happened in the 70s before I was born and you put things in their proper <laughs> context where I get all excited. Uh, tell me a little bit about your thoughts on this current Yankee team. It's a, it's a good thing to bring up. You know, the 70s was my favorite uh, decade as a Yankee fan because I saw the team that became the 77 and 78, 76. They finally won a pennant after 12 years. <clears throat> and I saw the team evolve, you know, step by step, getting Willie Randolph in the trade and, you know, and Munson, Rookie of the Year, and then Gidry comes up in 75, 76, and so on. So, um uh, uh, this team was, uh, we thought was going to be that kind of team. we well, seeing the team evolve. That was going to run a little mini dynasty, you know, three, a few years ago with Sanchez and judge and, um, and the other guys, uh, and it didn't turn out that way. And it, it's a frustrating, so frustrating to watch this team this year. I know they're playing better, but it doesn't give me a whole lot of faith because, I, I just don't get the lack of small ball. It was Billy Ball that, that it made the difference in the, in the 70s, you know. And in the 90s, you had, you know, Tino Martinez led the league with sacrifice flies. You know, I, where are they? Where, you know, where's the stolen base? Where's the bunt? You know, uh, Odor bunted the other day, and I started screaming at the TV. It's like, thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I, you, the thing is, you can't build. The Yankees are going to perennially, perennially be in it, right? We know that this year is going to be a struggle to get in it, but they probably will do that. Then you have to look at the team. How it's how is it going to function, and how is it going to perform under pressure against great pitching in a short series? And are you built to win those tight one nothing two one games? Um, and they're not. They're just not built for that. Not only that, but the, the, the biggest key in the 90s and 2000s was uh, Mariano, right? Without Mariano, they're not that dynasty. And their and they're closing and their relief right now is, is very shaky at best, although it seems to be putting itself back into order right uh, now. So, I, you know, it's a very frustrating baseball type of baseball to, to watch nowadays, even when they win. I like Rizzo because he's a contact guy. Uh, they they have more lefties in the lineup, which is you know thank thanks thankfully, <laughs> finally, uh, I don't understand the way the team was built uh, in the last two years. As good as Voigt is, and as good as some of the other right-handed hitters are, you have to have balance, you have to have speed, and you have to have contact hitters and people who know how to bunt to win a short series. Richard Schiff joins the show. You know him from ABC's Good Doctor, diehard Nick and Yankees fan. What would Otani look like in pinstripes? Oh, uh, very, very, very nicely. <laughs> hey, you're such a baseball fan. You must love seeing what he's been able to do in, in such a short time in the bigs. Well, he's a you know stunning act, athlete. I mean, to have that kind of power and to have that kind of arm, I, you know, I, I you kind of root for a way in which he won't get uh, broken down and hurt. You know, like he has been. Um, but they're all get they all get hurt nowadays. Um, but yeah, it's remarkable. I, I don't get to see him perform very often because uh, I'm not in LA anymore. But uh, yeah, no, it's 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 special. And he has speed, you know. And, you know, and he hits for average. You know, all the all all great things. Does it's everything as a player, which is often how you're described as an actor. I've seen you in all types of projects over the years. I was flipping through the dial the other day. Jurassic Park Two. You're the guy who saves them. And then a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex shows up and you don't make it to Jurassic Park 3. I mean, you've popped up in so many <laughs> things over the years. Uh, recently, Ballers, of course, which we're interested in on this show. What do you remember from your days on set with The Rock and some of your first interactions? 
Uh, he's just a sweetheart. I mean, I wish I had some dirt I could spread, it, you know, and uh, make this more interesting. But he's, he's a sweetheart. Uh, he's, works hard. He gets up at 3 o'clock every morning, works out for two hours, does his business, comes to set, and has a full day. And, and we have fun. We had, we had such a blast with Rob Cordry and later on with Stephen Weber and uh, as my brother. And uh, just nothing but fun. I thoroughly and totally enjoyed working on that show. And, and The Rock is, uh, is, a, is just a, a, good, a good man. That's You've got right. another That's connection to uh, sports storytelling. Brockman was surprised to learn that you pop up in Major League Two. Yeah, <laughs> That's correct. What do you remember yeah. from your time on set for Major League Two? Brockman still doesn't believe you. I, I still don't movie. believe it. <laughs> I got to go back you and know, watch. You, you don't remember the scene? I got to go back. Come on. You got to go back and watch it, man. Remember when uh, Charlie Sheen's character was uh, uh, doing commercials and uh, the, uh, the accoutrements of success in baseball, and I played a director of the TV commercial, and Charlie was getting everything wrong. And uh, I got a little frustrated over time. And uh, uh, it's actually a fun scene. I, I enjoyed it. And I remember it was just, you know, meeting Charlie, uh, who I've worked with later on, and, of course, got to know his entire family eventually. Um, and it was just a, a day job, you know, back when I was, you know, uh, crawling my way up the ladder, if you will. Uh, but it was a fun, it was a fun day. Richard Schiff joins the show. You know him from ABC's The Good Doctor. Ben Lyons in for Rich on The Rich Eisen Show. If memory serves, you first moved to Los Angeles right around the time where Kirk Gibson hit that home run? Uh, yeah, memory serves you well. Uh, what do you remember about was, being in Los Angeles, coming to L.A., start your career as an actor, and well, the Dodgers I, are in the World Series? I, yeah, it goes a little deeper than that because we, my friend Brian and I at the time, we uh, we made our money to cross country, gambling on the Mets in eighty six in eighty eight. Uh, if you remember, David Cohn had a great year. I think it was twenty and three that year. Uh, Goodson was still pitching okay. We rode the Mets gambling and made thousands of dollars enough to buy a car, and uh, and we had just done a movie together, Brian and I, uh, my first or second movie. It was going to be screened in L.A. Um, I had just gotten a divorce and had bad memories on every street corner in New York. And he goes, hey, let's move to L.A. And I went, OK. <laughs> so we we moved and um, gambled our way all, all the way across the country, gambling on any game that we could find on the radio. Stopped in Vegas where I lost half of it and then uh, got to L.A. And we knew uh, Keith Miller. Uh, the utility second baseman. So we got seats to the Mets and Dodgers. And we, of course, bet the Mets because we rode them all year. They lost to uh, Hershiser got hot. So I dropped it all. Whatever I had left in my life, whatever cash I had scraped together to, to make my trip out to L.A., all on Oakland in game one. And we, we played our first softball game out at, in Malibu, went to the Malibu Inn uh, to, to watch the game. Conseco hits the grand slam. We're up 4-3. to three. Dennis Eckersley, who you know hasn't given up a home run in two years, future Hall of Famer, um, hits, I forget who it was, I don't think it was Alfredo Griffin, but somebody like that in the knee. There's a man on first, and Lasorda sends the, Excuse the express. I call him the gimp, but I shouldn't do that. Sends up uh, a guy who shouldn't be playing in the game because he was scratched almost. He was hurt. He had only one leg. And uh, Eckersley, I since talked to Eckersley about this. I since talked to Kirk Gibson about it and other major leaguers. And I always ask, why, why, oh, why, after he fouled off and couldn't catch up to 10 straight fastballs, did he throw him? a change-up or an off-season, uh, I think a backdoor slider he threw him. <clears throat> no one can answer that, not even Eckersley. And Gibson put one hand on it, and it, and he's so strong that it, he hit it out. Dodgers won. Malibu win went berserk, and I was broke. And that's uh, my first week in L.A. Wow. Oh what a welcome to Los Angeles story. Then you go on and win multiple Emmys and have a great career as an actor, and someone tells me you weren't betting on baseball games. Too soon yeah, after that. Yeah, that didn't happen the next day. It took a while to get over. <laughs> a while to recover. 
uh, from that event. That was de- that was the last bet I've made. I haven't made a bet since that day. Richard Schiff joins the show. Last thing, Richard, what color Lakers Carmelo Anthony jersey should I buy? What color? <laughs> don't what inter- don't entertain this, Richard. <laughs> He's coming to win a championship. We have to root for Carmelo. He's our guy, Richard. Once a Nick, always a Nick. You're not rooting for Melo in L.A.? You're not bleeding purple and gold? I got to tell you, I don't know where you, I don't know if we talked about Carmelo, but for my money, uh, Carmelo did just fine in New York, and they didn't surround him with the right people. Look, he's no different than, uh, uh, the name just popped out of my head. Who's our number one guy in New York right now? Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett. Yeah, uh, uh, the Randall, right? Uh, and uh, Randall's no different. He he takes the ball. He's one on one. He may, he creates. He creates for himself. That's what Melo did, you know. Uh, they, they just and when he when they called on him to play power forward and to get rebounds, he did that. I, I liked Melo. I just don't like the team back then. So I yes, I'm rooting for him. I want his legacy to turn around. Um, but I hate the Lakers so much. It's a mixed bag. I despise them. <laughs> It's going to be a tough sight when you see me pull up on the first tee with a uh, purple and gold Carmelo hat on. I think it's no, going to be, no, it's going no, to be no. tough. If I ever see you morning. without that Nick hat on the first tee, <laughs> there's going to be trouble. You might throw some of those clubs you throw at me instead of down the fairway. There you go. Uh, you know, uh, accidentally it could happen. <laughs> Richard Schiff joins the show. We appreciate you taking some time and hope we get to tee it up soon, my friend. Me too, pal. Nice to, see, uh, nice to talk to you and, uh, and I miss you. See you soon. Thank you. Love to Sheila. Shout out to Richard Schiff joining the show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.